Uh, we'll get started here with T Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey, good morning, Terry. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you guys? Excellent. Doing well here. Um, curious on how you and Taylor and the rest of the staff went about figuring out where Marquise Wilson was going to rep and how many reps he was going to take in receiver and cornerback over the course of this preseason camp and really what his role is going to be for this team. Yeah, that was a, uh, a juggling piece there. You know, early on in camp, he spent a lot of time in the secondary. Uh, and then toward the latter part of camp, he spent, you know, a, a significant amount of time with the receivers. And this week we're splitting them. Um, you know, he's available to play on either side of the ball. And, you know, Marquise is a tremendous athlete, and especially on the back end of the defense. He's played a lot of football for us here. So um, I think it was more so to get him caught up with a new system on offense, make sure he knows what's going on over there. Uh, and then on our side, you know, we're, we're still doing pretty much the same things here. And he knows the defense pretty well. We'll go to Rich Garcella with the Reading Eagle. Hi, Terry. How are you today? I'm doing very well, thanks. Terry, uh, Tariq Castro Fields spoke with us yesterday, and I was just wondering um, what kind of camp do you think he had and, and what can he do, a healthy Tariq, do for your team this year? Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, it, it was great to have Tariq a healthy Tariq go through camp. Um, he had a tremendous camp, you know, obviously being a fifth year guy, he, he brings a wealth of knowledge and experience. Um, you know, obviously he's a, a long, big, fast corner for us. Uh, but more importantly, he, he brings the experience factor. You know, he understands our defense. He understands what coach Pry is trying to do with, with all the calls. Uh, he's a great communicator. He's super smart. Uh, he, he mentors and teaches our younger guys on the back end. Um, so he's, he's an invaluable member to our back end and to our team. Let's go to Mark Brennan with Fight On State. Hey, Terry, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Mark. What was it? Uh, what was the situation with Jordan Miner being at uh, Photo Day? And and can you just talk about his journey here at Penn State? I'm sure it was pretty difficult for him. You were one of the guys who recruited him, but to have him be there, what did that kind of mean to him in the program? Thanks. Yeah, you know Jordan continues to be a, a major part of our team. You know he, he came in and unfortunately wasn't able to to participate on the field but he still participates with all team functions. Uh, he's around for practices. Uh, he's still one of the guys in the locker room with, with the fellas. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a big part of our team. So, you know, he's included in everything that we do. Um, you know, we, we were all disappointed several years back when he didn't have the opportunity to extend his playing career, um, but he's valuable to us, you know, and, you know, for a guy like Johnny Dixon, who he knows personally, uh, he was he was valuable for us bringing Johnny Dixon here. Let's go to Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Hey, Jerry, thanks for your time. Um, I wanted to go back to Kenny and Alan Zemitis, and we talked a little bit about them before, uh, but what did it mean when you bring in a guy like Alan with his background but also to get Kenny back into the fold after he'd been here before when you guys had success. Yeah. You know, when you talk about in particular, Kenny, um, you know, he brings a wealth of experience in the recruiting department. Uh, he knows Penn state. He's been here, you know, when, when we, we had our, you know, on paper best recruiting class, Kenny was a part of that. Um, he just knows us. You know, he's, he's a great communicator. He has great people skills. Uh, he has great connections. Uh, he, he networks all over the country. Uh, he brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to us. Uh, and then when you look at Alan Zemitis, you know, coming from a coaching role, coming from a Penn State background, played in the NFL, understands football, understands scheme, and can talk to the prospects in the way that, that most recruiting staffs cannot. So both those guys are so valuable for our recruiting department and our staff um, in different ways, 
but but equally as important. I think that was me, Terry. Can you hear me? Sorry, Mark. Yep. No, no problem. Thanks. It's September 2nd now, Terry, and you guys, I can go back on the road recruiting during the evaluation period. How do you plan to approach that this September, doing that again? Yeah, we're planning to be super busy. Uh, you know, with the opportunity to get on the road, we, we haven't been on the road in over a year. So we want to take advantage of, of the opportunities this fall. Uh, we'll manage you know, which weekends that, that we'll send coaches out on the road, but, you know, probably starting next week or the following week, we're, we're going to have one, two, three, or four coaches out on the road, uh, maximizing the amount of days that we're allowed out on the road. Let's go to new bias Wilborn with the Pittsburgh post-gazette. Hey, thanks for the time, fam. I always appreciate it, Terry. Yes, sir. Man. Um, what have you guys noticed with, um, Jair Brown that decided to where you can make him the starter at, at safety. Yeah, Jair, we call him Tig is his nickname. Um, you know, he's been super consistent. You know, he, he's where he is supposed to be in the defense. He understands the defense. He communicates really well. Um, you know, he's an older uh, young man that that's played a lot of football and you know, had a good start last year for us. And um, we, we just felt like his consistency and playmaking ability uh, fits what we need to, to be that guy opposite of Brisker. Um, we just feel like he's the, the, the added piece to make this one of the best secondaries in the nation. Let's go to Greg Pickle with BWI. Hey, Coach, thanks for your time this morning. Yes, sir. In looking at uh, two guys that are newer to your program, I guess, what has Kalen King shown you as a development between a spring and summer camp? And then uh, A.J. Lighton's a guy you brought in as a transfer. What has he shown you since he's arrived? Yeah, Kalen's been, uh, you know, he continues to do great things. You know, he had a really big spring for us, uh, had a great summer and, and a great fall camp. You know, he's going to play a lot of football for us, and we're excited about him. Uh, we're going to continue to to move him along and push him forward, and you know, and get him some reps. He's going to play Saturday, so uh, we're we're really happy where he is. Uh, AJ has brought some some depth to the position. Uh, going to play on some special teams and things, and um, you know, he he's he has a lot of knowledge and experience. So, you know, the corner room has six or seven guys that have played or can play. And, and are ready to play. So the, the depth is pretty good. Let's go to Frank Bodani with the York Daily Record. Hi, Terry. Um, I know you understand receivers quite well, your time at Penn State. How about Jahan Dotson, the most special thing about him on your team, where you see his season going? Yeah, obviously we're all excited about Jahan. Um, you know, he's, he's as good a receiver as, as we've had in the program. Uh, you know, unparalleled ball skills. You know, the guy can, can make any, any catch that's, that's in his catch radius. Uh, and he has great speed. You know, I want, I, I want to say deceptive speed, but that's not the right word when you run 4-3. Um, you know, he can run, and, and he's shifty, and he, he's a great route runner, and He's a, you know, I can't say enough good things about him. He's a great teammate. He's a great person. Uh, I'm glad he's on our team. He helps our back end get better every day in one-on-ones and, and skelly work and competition. Um, you know, hopefully he's, he's, he's primed to have a great year. He's had a great camp. I mean, he's been impressive. When he's out there, you know he's out there, you know, and, and, and he's making plays all over the field. And, you know, now it's time to carry him on to Saturdays. Let's go to John Sauber with the Center Daily Times. Hey, Terry, what stands out to you about the, uh, the Wisconsin wide receivers and what do you see as their strengths? 
Yeah, they they're uh, a consistent group of you know they run good routes. They're they're well coached. Um, you, you know, when, when when you watch these guys, they're very disciplined. You know, if they're telling their guys to be at 18 yards on a comeback, you know, you watch the film. That's where all of them are. They're at that 18 yard comeback. So you you know that, that you're going to get consistency. You're going to get guys that work hard. You know, they, they have a couple guys that can run. Um, they're going to be disciplined. And the, the challenge for us this week is having great eye discipline, you know, because they're going to try to establish the run game and then the play action game comes off of that. And if your eyes are bad, that's where they can get you. So we just got to make sure our pass defenders are defending pass first and the run defenders are defending the run first. So, um, you know, and they got a couple of guys that can stretch the field as well and, you know, who knows what new wrinkles they put in through the off season. You know, we feel like the, the, the coach is going to be calling the plays and uh, you know, we'll see what's new this year. Let's go to Tyler Donahue with Lions 247. Terry, I want to ask you about a couple Western PA guys. Uh, Daquan Hardy seems to be in line for a, a pretty significant role this year. And then Jaquan Brisker, who you've known for a long time, getting to not just the All-American buzz right now, but the, the team captaincy, if you could share some thoughts on where he's at now. Yeah, you know, I'll start with da Daquan Hardy. You know, he, he's going to play a lot at our nickel position. Um, you know, kid just continues to be consistent. Uh, when you look at him, he's a little undersized for what you would like it to be. Um, but he makes up for that with speed, athleticism, intelligence. Uh, he's a playmaker. You know, he's always around the ball. Um, he can blitz. He can tackle. Um, he doesn't have a weakness in his game. You know, and he's just been consistent. You know, we love him, and he's very valuable to our defense. Uh, when it comes to Brisker, you know, I can't be prouder of a guy than Jaquan Brisker. I'm re re really, really close to him and his family. Uh, I've coached two of his older brothers. Um, have a relationship with you know, his his mom used to do my wife and my daughter's hair. So I know him very intimately and I know his struggles. I know his story. Uh, and for a guy that's in line to get his degree this fall and have football at the fingertips of, of where he wants it, um, I'm just so happy for him. And the guy works super hard. You know, he, he's earned everything that he's getting in life and everything he's getting on his football field. So, you know, just excited to see him unleash all the hard work that he's put in and, and see it come out on Saturday. Mark Brennan. Terry, what makes Joey Porter Jr. so unique as a cornerback? And uh, what are your expectations for him this season? Well, one of the, the biggest uniqueness for him is he, he's got 35 inch arms. Um, you know, I think the only other guy in the program that was like that was um, Adolfe Owe, uh, who, you know, left last year. You know, just his length is unparalleled. Uh, and then for a guy that's over six foot two, uh, he has great speed. You know, he's a low four foot guy. When you when you combine that with the ability to, to change directions, uh, it, it gives him an opportunity to be a, a unique, special type of individual on the back end. So, you know, we're excited about Joey. He had a really good camp. He's been consistent. He's healthy. Uh, just looking forward to him going out and executing, and uh, you know, basically just doing his job. You know, I tell the guys on the back end. We, we don't ask you to do anything special, but when the play comes to you, just be ready to defend the play and make the play that, that you're capable of, play, of making. So uh, he, he's ready. He's at a great camp and just ain't just to see him. Audrey. Sorry, couldn't find your mute button. Um, Terry, you guys um, as a whole have struggled the last couple of years with creating takeaways. And I know a lot of guys say, you know, it's been emphasized and you always emphasize it in practice, but um, what leads you to believe that you guys will be better in that area this year? Well, you never know till you get out there and, and, and prove it. Um, but we are working harder on our ball skills. We, we're on jugs more than ever. 
Uh, we've, we've done more takeaway periods than ever. Uh, we, we've communicated it more than ever, and we're making it a point of emphasis each and every day of practice and each and every game. So, you know, you never know until it actually comes to fruition, but I do know we, we've made it more of a point of emphasis than ever. So we're, we're just going to keep working hard at trying to get those takeaways because we know how important they are. We know if you win the takeaway game, you're going to win more football games than, than not. So it's very important and, and we're conscious about it. Go ahead, Rich. Terry, sort of on the same vein, um, the defense gave up over 27 points a game last year, the most in the school history. What leads you to believe that the defense will be better this year? Uh, just the continuity of the team. You know, we, we, we are more together than ever. Um, our locker room harmony is great. These guys respect each other, like each other, and want to play for each other. You know, we're, we're trying to devise a scheme that, that fits the personnel. Uh, Coach Pride does a great job of, of pulling that all together. And, you know, there's just such continuity through preseason that we feel really good where we are right now. Um, obviously, no one knows until you go out there to that first game to see exactly where you are, but we're, we're confident we had a great camp and, um, you know, guys are, are, are doing their job and lining up where they're supposed to be and, and getting after it, you know, playing as 11, 11 guys playing as one. Um, you know, we're excited to see, see what happens. We got time for three more for Terry. We'll go to New Bias. Uh, Terry, do you, I guess, um, one, do you get a chance to look at the other team's corners before I ask this question? Uh, not really, no. Okay, all right. Well, then I, I'll switch off that. Then um, for you guys, knowing everything that's going on in society, how are you still handling precautions and things when it comes to COVID, both for your recruiting travel as well as getting the team ready? Yeah, we, we're just following all the rules that have been set in place, you know, whether it's state guidelines or university policies and um, – you know, just just doing our part to to make sure our guys are safe and healthy. Um, you know, it continues to be a challenge um, all around us. Um, our guys have have been really great. Um, we just follow the protocols and, and and make sure that you know we stay on top of each other and and in lack of better words, be each our brother's keeper. Um, just to make sure we stay healthy and. You know, at the end of the day, we all want to play football. And so we have to do what's necessary for us to, to be able to enjoy the game that we all love. So um, our guys are doing great. Our, our kids are all bought in. The staff's bought in. Um, we're going to do our part to, to play as many games as we can play this year. Greg Pickle. Terry, just to clarify, you guys won't have anybody out on the road recruiting this week, right? Right. And then just what was Wednesday morning like getting to interact with 2023 recruits for the first time for you and the staff? Yeah, it's like the um, the hourglass, you know, we turn that thing over and, you know, now that it's, it's full, you know, with new prospects in the 23 class and had an opportunity to to message and talk to a ton of guys. You know, I know coach's phone was blown up at midnight and, you know, he's reaching out to guys and the entire staff was up. Uh, sending graphics and communication and uh, you know it's a huge day in recruiting first day that you can talk to the class of 23 and, and communicate with those guys so uh, it was exciting kind of energizing um, now we're just excited to continue to build those relationships where you know the communication is is a lot easier to to reach those guys and we'll wrap it up with Frank Bodani Hey, Terry, you, you guys came into preseason camp with maybe your deepest cornerback room, most talent there maybe ever at Penn State. So how did you guys handle pre – like what's the biggest takeaway you got from your room in preseason camp? Biggest surprise, biggest positive? What stands out to you the most? Well, it is a competitive room. Um, those guys know, and, you know, I told them day one, no one has a starting job. The most consistent 
play will will win the job. And um, you know, we felt like Tariq and, and Joey had really good, consistent camps, and Kalen King really just continues to impress us. Um, you know, obviously Daquan Hardy's going with play at the star. You know, it's a competitive room. Um, you know, with the addition of AJ Linton coming in, you know, kid's a four three runner. He's fast. He's athletic. He's quick. Uh, you know, obviously Marquise is there as well, and Johnny Dixon. There's there's a ton of guys. You know, and even Zaki Wheatley. You, you know, who's a freshman, has turned heads. And you know, we're really excited about him. Um, so we're just going to continue to to grow the room and, and teach the room and and keep them competitive. You know, because at the end of the day, we have to go out and be consistent. We can't have one good quarter and, and one bad quarter. We, we've got to be good for four quarters until the final whistle. Uh, and competition keeps guys playing harder. Um, so we, we'll just keep the room competitive and, you know, we'll rotate a little bit and, and play some guys. But, you know, we're excited where we are. All right. Thank you very much, Terry, and appreciate everybody joining us today.